All right, guys, welcome to day two of uh, Northern Powerhouse week. And uh, gone, gone off to, can't speak, how many times do I say that in videos nowadays? And yes, do apologize for the, the lighting in this video. Uh, yeah, got off to a great start with uh, the first beer, uh, the small IPA from Track and Northern Monk. So we're going uh, just about an hour and a half train ride, there or thereabouts, over to that there, Leeds. And uh, this is the second entry, uh, a collaboration with North Brewing Company. And this is a can of the Triple Fruit Goza, clocking in at 4% ABV. And this is brewed with prickly pear, white guava, and raspberry. Uh, IBUs are 12, EBC is 6, and OG is 1.045. Uh, fantastic artwork from James Butler, who is a tattoo artist, if I remember correctly. Fantastic stuff. Just, just so mesmerising. And there you've got the... Uh, Famous flower, I always forget what it's called. You know, you'd think that being born and raised in the north, I'd be a little bit more knowledgeable of uh, my surroundings and uh, surrounding towns and cities, but I'm ignorant. I'm overweight. Didn't need to bring that second part into the equation, but I did. So be it. Anyway, so yeah, I've had uh, a couple, well, I've actually had a few of the. Uh, the fruited goes beers from north and they've all been absolutely blinding um in fact me and rob from hot scene were at the uh the brewery um, a few weeks ago prior to recording this and uh, we've been to temple coffee and donuts and we've got some fruitier sort of donuts fruitier and uh, we paired them with gozers and it worked beautifully well but we didn't record it because we were too enthralled in the Locale. It was a little bit busy, and we were stuffing our faces with beer and donuts. So, what do you expect us to do? But uh, yeah, so triple fruit it goes, clocking in at four percent ABV, and uh, working with our Leeds neighbours, North Bruco, we put together the pinkest of fruit sours. You will have to excuse my reading, by the way, today, showcasing the freshly, the fleshy cactus fruit, prickly pear. We then backed it up with a vibration on my phone, which is very annoying. And zingy tropical notes of guava, a touch of tangy raspberry, and rounded everything out with milk sugar and salt. So, uh, yeah, sounds absolutely delightful. So very much looking forward to this one. So without any further ado using, of course, the Northern Monk glass, dressed in Northern Monk attire. Completely by accident this part was, by the way. You know, I've been sweating my bollocks off because I'm actually recording this the same evening that I record recorded yesterday's video. Uh, so, yeah, I'm just like, uh, just get it up. That's what she said. And, uh, yeah, so if you're drinking along, then I hope you're enjoying it. And if you watch this retrospectively, I hope you're enjoying it as well. And if you don't have these beers, then... I just hope you're enjoying the video. Anyway, so without any further ado, let's get this poured and see what we get. And straight away, I'm madly in love with this beer. What a beautiful colour that is. Oh my word. Fantastic <laughs> stuff. This lighting is doing this beer no justice, by the way. Uh, yeah, that is... Do you know what that reminds me of? You know... Um, what are they called? Something in custard. Rhubarb and custard. You know rhubarb and custard sweets? The, the rhubarb aspect of it. That's what it reminds me of. That is absolutely ridiculous. That is turbid. It's hazy. It's like a solid block of colour. It looks like the slime from uh, Ghostbusters. They agree. And, uh, yeah, that just looks ridiculous, doesn't it? It's like Innocent Smoothie in a glass. Pinkish, little bit of a pink grapefruit vibe going on as well. Wonderful, wonderful colour. And so thick and dense looking. 
Anyway, beer poured with about half a finger's worth of a slightly tinged white head. So, uh, yeah, looking ridiculous. Let's see what we get on the nose. Oh, yes. That is like yogurt. Is that raspberries? It's like raspberry yogurt, man. Oh, that is ridiculous. Oh, that smells so good. You, of course, get a little bit of the, the, the salt coming through on the nose. Salt form of seasons the beer. I've not had too many uh, prickly pears. And I've had a few things with guava in, but I wouldn't really know what, like, a classic tasting note for guava. Guava. Can't speak. Can't pronounce words. Might as well end this video here, but I won't because I'm going to ramble on about this beer. So you've got like a peach yogurt vibe about it. Do you know what it reminds me of? You know those kids yogurts where you get two of each flavour in the tiny little tubs? That's what it smells like. It smells ridiculous. It's fruity. It's like tropical breakfast juice. Smoothies. It is like, you'd, you'd think I'd poured Innocent Smoothie into this. It's ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. So, uh, yeah. And it smells ridiculous too. So let's see what it tastes like. Cheers, guys. Prost. Said that because it's a goes beer. German style. I'm cultured, sophisticated, so sue me. I jest. I'm an arsehole. Cheers. It's got the body of Innocent Smoothie. And there's like a really pronounced creaminess on the body. But then there's just the, the right amount of carbonation to help dissipate the beer around the palate. I would say the strongest flavour in this. Don't know why I keep taking these like big steps back. Um, the strongest flavour for me and it works beautifully well, is that raspberry. There's a little bit of vanilla coming through as well, because it was brewed with milk sugars, wasn't it? If I remember correctly. Yeah, that's where I was getting the yogurt from. Ooh. Oh, God, that's good. It's actually... In terms of the style, that fruitiness really softens it. So you're not puckering when you take your first sip. It's got that zing you get with like freshly squeezed fruit juice. You know, it's not really been sweetened and it's just got those natural sweet flavours. Oh, it's just the right amount of tanginess, man. That's absolutely gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. We went from the the track collab and then we've just like smashed through this ceiling because this is this is wonderful it genuinely genuinely is it's majestic like my hair is right now um and i look very badly sunburned because i'm pale as hell so two seconds in the sun and uh i've got a pinkish hue to me almost like this beer but yeah that's that's ridiculous I know it's because I've heard the word prickly pear and I'm getting that in this. It reminds me of, you know, you could go to like a like specialist international oriental sort of supermarkets and you can get like the cans of um, like cactus juice and that sort of stuff, which I've only ever tried once. It was an intriguing experience. This reminds me of like some of those really you know, exotic tropical drinks you'd find in an oriental supermarket. Like, um, you know, Asian sodas, that sort of stuff. I think, is the guava adding sweetness to this beer? Because I can't remember what guava, it's like guava, 
Like, is, is that what... I'm looking as if someone's there and I'm asking them a question. Is guava the... Like, a, an alternative to sugar? Um, that's what I've always thought that is, but it's fruit, obviously. And it's having a, a nice sweetness. The, there are characters in there that my palate is not used to. So it's adding a level of intrigue to the experience. And it's just lifting it even higher. I think I'm only the second beer in out of seven. Contender of beer of the box. And from my experience with North's uh, Go's style beers that I've had the, uh, I've, look, I've been lucky to try this is this is not just one of the best beers from this box at this point. This is probably one of the best ghost style beers that I've had all year. And that's one of those sour styles that I absolutely love. It's not too rich either with that milk sugar. Sometimes I find when you add that sort of stuff to beer, it gets a little bit heavy on the gut. You feel a little bit... Ugh. Like overkill, like vanilla overkill. But this. And the saltiness just. It leaves a feeling on your mouth in the aftertaste. So it's not really tasted salty as as such. And I wouldn't even say it's sort of like similar to when you uh, have salt water. And you accidentally might get some on your lips and that sort of stuff. It's just there. It's like it's it's seasoning the beer perfectly. So it doesn't become its own pronounced flavour and distracting from other characteristics in the beer. God, I sound so, so sophisticated when I talk about beer sometimes. I'm just a prodigy. I'm not really. But yeah, that, that's beautiful. Uh, to cut a long story short, I, I can't pick out any faults or negative aspects uh, is it too style classically? No. <clears throat> but, lovely burp as well. But it's... I try to move away from, like, rating beers in terms of, like, classical style. I try and do them from, like, a... I mean, I try to be as objective as I can be, but I'm also very subjective. So if I'm enjoying a beer and it's, you know, ticking all the boxes for me in terms of being a satisfying experience, then it's going to get a 10 out of 10. And I think there's nothing even in the back of my mind stopping me from giving this a 10 out of 10, uh, from not giving it a 10 out of 10, do you know what I mean? Or anything less than a 10. That's beautiful. It's one of the best North beers that I've actually had. And uh, yeah, they're, um, they're a force to be rec reckoned with. We all know it already. And um, yeah, Northern Monk, they know how to brew sour beers as well. So you're getting these two fantastic breweries, two of the best in the country, coming together and they've produced something marvellous like this. And it's from the amazement of the colour to the satisfaction uh, of the actual drinking experience and the beautiful, beautiful artwork. It like sort of, it symbolises why I love doing this. So uh, yeah, I'm not going to apologise for a 10 out of 10 review. Some people may disagree, that's fine. If you've drank this, let me know your thoughts and opinions. Let's compare notes. Let's have a discussion um, about this. And uh, if you're watching this retrospectively and you've got a box, fantastic. So uh, yeah, I'd love to hear your thoughts and opinions on this one, if you do indeed get to try it. So yeah, doing pretty damn good. And I'm actually in the mood to actually put another beer in the fridge and enjoy it. So, vibration again. I think it moved the camera. Lovely. Uh, next up, it's Don Zoko. So we're going to have a bit of Pilsner action. And I think I'm going to pop that in the fridge because I've got a pizza that's about to be put in the freezer. That being said, I won't be able to get a pretentious outdoor thumbnail because it'll be a bit dark. I'm in a moral quandary. Anyway, no, I think we're going to call it a night. I don't want to just power through these, so I want to try and save them, even though I'm going to be uploading the videos in a few days. Less than a few days, actually. 
yeah lovely stuff i'm off tomorrow so i'll probably have a few beers throughout the day and um yeah that is going to be very very hard to beat so if you've tried it let me know your thoughts opinions are you a fan of either brewery uh, then i'd love to hear your thoughts or recommendations and uh, yeah if you have indeed uh, managed to try these beers whether it's you've got the box or you've tried them on uh, on tap in some of the the bars around the uk that are um pouring these beers that i'd love to hear your thoughts opinions so check out both breweries and also check out james butler and uh, check out the the playlist for the rest of the videos for this week and uh, yeah i feel like the money i've spent on this box so far after two beers is going to be money well spent so anyway i've waffled on for way too long thank you guys for watching this video and i'll hope i'll i hope you'll join me tomorrow for another beer review Thank you guys for watching and uh, you all take care. Cheers.